it is five o'clock. I will call the Sheboygan Transit Commission to order. Um, for those present, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so I'll call the roll. Um, Alder Sorensen is here. Alder Trey Mitchell. Present. Uh, Dean Decker. Here. Ryan. All right, Mike. Uh, Chief Domagowski. Yep. Um, Chad, we're here. Charles Windsor. Roy. Yep. And Derek. All right. Election of officers. Um, how should we do this? Do we, so we need chair, new, new chair, new vice chair? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, with uh, Alder, uh, former Alder uh, Wolf now becoming city administrator, that left the uh, vacancy for the transit commission chair position. Um, you currently hold the vice chair position, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think you can just open up the nominations um, for election of officers, and if you get nominated for the chair position, then uh, they would backfill, or we you could backfill for the vice chair. Sure, sounds fine. Um, I'll open up nominations. <laughs> Any nominations <laughs> for chair? Sure, sure. Chad Palachek. I'll nominate Ryan Sorensen. Okay. I'll second that. All right, there's been a motion and second to nominate myself. I'll accept. Any other nominations? All right. There's been a motion to close the nominations and cast unanimous ballot. Is there a second? Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Ch aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you, everybody. Um, I'd like to open up nominations for vice chair. Chad Paljack. <laughs> oh. Dean, do you accept? I'll accept. All right, and then there's been a second by Mike. Any other nominations for vice chair? Any other nominations? Oh. All right, there's been a motion to cast union ballot for Dean Decker for vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of um, casting unanimous ballot for Dean Decker for vice chair, please state aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye, that's approved. All right, congratulate them. Um, moving along, minutes, June 30th. Well, that was a while ago. Um, all those in favor of approving, or is there a motion to approve the minutes from our previous meeting? So motion by Chad. Is there a second? second? Second by Mike. Any further discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye, the minutes are approved. All right, mosing along, public hearing for fare changes for Shoreline Metro Specialized Transit Services. Director Derrick. Thank you. Um, today we are holding a public hearing uh, for proposed fare changes to specialized transit services provided by Metro Connection. Uh, standard fare is being proposed, which would decrease the current ADA paratransit fare from $3.50 per trip to $3 per trip, and increase the current county uh, elderly and disabled program fare from $2.50 per trip to $3 uh, per trip. If you wanna just go through each one of the bullets and the the 3.1 through 3.5, Ryan. That yeah, sure, Okay, that works for you. Uh, so 3.1 is verification of compliance for the public hearing. Uh, I just wanna make uh, everybody aware here that um, we did post uh, notices on each of our uh, revenue service vehicles, both fixed route and paratransit buses. Uh, these have been out for uh, past the 30 day period. I believe both of them are encroaching on 30 day, uh, 40 days, excuse me. Um, an ad was placed in the Sheboygan Press. Uh, the ad was placed on Saturday, August uh, 
22nd, excuse me, so one month ago today. Um, and then uh, we did have some changes to the room. Uh, so additional notices were published uh, on the entrances to both uh, conference room 106 on the first floor and uh, conference room 305 here as well. So uh, we did meet the compliancy on the uh, public hearing notices. Uh, 3.02, I don't know, it uh, doesn't seem like anybody's here for public input. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, how much you'd want me to go through this. It is pretty straightforward, cut and dry on the fare increases. Uh, basically what we wanted to do was just create one, uh, one fare that was consistent across the board. Uh, as my IFC states, um, it's more or less just an opportunity to streamline this for our customers, uh, make it consistent. The county is going to plan on taking up the same issue at their October Transportation Coordinating Committee meeting. So upon approval at that meeting, this would go into effect. And, and upon your approval here, uh, it would go into effect on January 1st of 2021. <clears throat> we did receive some public comments uh, ahead of the meeting. Um, I'm not going to go through those as they were supplied to you guys in advance. Um, if you have any questions on any of the public comments, or on the proposed fare changes. Uh, I guess I would take them now. Any comments or questions, Mike? Chair, could you please uh, explain a little bit of the difference uh, brought up by our, our home system ministries about the difference in the rates of $17 and the Sure. Uh, the question by Mayor Vandersteen was to address the uh, letter that came in from the uh, our uh, home Christian Ministries, uh, talking about the $17 agency fair. Um, the agency fair, uh, first off, I'll just say that this location uh, is on Oostburg, and this location is uh, serviced through the county's uh, transportation program, uh, currently uh, known as the $2.50 fare. Um, the $17 that is being talked about is charged to social service agencies that receive funding through different uh, state or federal programs that also do include transportation services. The reason why we have an agency fair in place is so that agencies that are already receiving transportation aids as part of the benefits that they're distributing to their clients, um, they aren't able to double dip and further subsidize those uh, by taking advantage of our per uh, trip out of pocket fare. The $2.50 and $3.50 rates are uh, meant for customers that are paying for their trips out of pocket, not being sub subsidized by other agencies. This is the basis as to why we have the agency fair in place for almost 10 years now. Um, the $17 does not represent the entire uh, true cost of the fair. It is really um, recouping most, uh, almost 75% of the fair cost um, associated with that. That's, we, we've tried to keep that uh, about 75% recoup uh, over the years, and uh, it might increase here in the near future, but as of right now, that's what the agency fair represents. Thank you, Thanks, Any other questions? Anyone else wishing to speak for the public hearing? Anyone else wishing to speak for the public hearing? Anyone else wishing to speak for the public hearing? Seeing none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close public hearing. Motion by Dean. Second by Mike. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of closing the public hearing, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. The chair votes aye. The public hearing is concluded. Moving along, action on public hearing item proposed fair changes for Metro Connection. Any other additional comment, Derek, on this? Or? Um, no, just that I'd be seeking approval uh, again uh, to adjust the ADA uh, paratransit fair. Um, that's really the one that uh, the Transit Commission has uh, control over. Uh, again, the county will take an, a separate motion on their, uh, their fare here in October. Um, and again, this would be uh, for January 1st of 2021. All right. Motion to approve the, chair, the fare change. Motion by Dean, second by Chad. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. 4.2, approval of the transit and parking second quarter um, operating statistic report. Derek? All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Um, no surprise here on some of the, uh, uh, on the second quarter reports here for uh, transit and parking, as uh, was forecasted already back in uh, our June meeting. Um, we were gonna be uh, significantly down in not only revenues, but also ridership. Uh, revenues uh, basically are down, obviously, because we haven't charged fares in, in April, May, or June. Uh, fares came back online in early uh, July, and ridership uh, had been down uh, significantly during that period as well. Um, slowly coming back now as uh, school kids are back in session and more and more people are uh, traveling, but we still are uh, significantly hindered by the pandemic, both in revenues and in ridership. Uh, you will see uh, on the fixed route side, most notably, uh, revenue trips uh, were 6.05 uh, trips per revenue hour. Um, We've had a significant decrease in our in our productivity uh, from last year, and uh, that continues uh, as the pandemic uh, lingers. Um, last year, we did have uh, almost a record high as far as ridership goes over the last 20 years. Um, so it it's no surprise that our, our numbers are going to be very very much down. Uh, Metro connection also substantially down. Uh, ridership uh, down about 39% with revenue down about 44% for the year again. Just looking at the second quarter alone, uh, we had uh, significant uh, decreases in ridership over last year's second quarter and productivity continues to uh, be significantly down as well. Can, um, can I ask a question? Yeah. Sorry, they gave me the mic so that everybody... I wasn't, I was, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> can, can you address the... So your, the CARES Act funds will offset the revenue. So I'm guessing you've tracked the people that were on the bus during those months. And will you be getting dollar for dollar reimbursement for the revenue losses? Uh, yeah. So in the, the general sense um, of, of how the CARES Act funds work, uh, we are able to not only uh, recoup or use CARES Act money towards increased expenses due to, let's say, cleaning, uh, equipment, personnel, things like that, uh, but we're also able to recoup our loss in revenues as well. Um, I just worked on this uh, calculator for 2020 and a proposed calculator for 2021 on how much uh, CARES Act money will be infused uh, over the next couple of years. Um, it's a rather complicated uh, calculator, if, if I might say, um, but it looks like uh, for 2020, we'd be using about a million to a million two um, and next year about the same range, um, maybe a little bit less. Our revenues are forecasted to be a little bit better. Um, but either way, we're, we're looking at a million dollars uh, this year and next year to uh, offset our losses and revenues and our uh, increase in. But there's a lot more to it. The, the funding is a lot better through CARES Act as it's 100% funded um, over our traditional federal uh, and state dollars. So we're trying to maximize uh, the amount of money. Uh, that we can use through CARES Act, and then also how much money we can save the uh, city as far as their, their portion of the tax levy uh, in 2020 and 2021. So I'll be working with uh, uh, City Administrator Wolf and his finance department later this week to talk about those numbers. All right. Is there, is there a motion to accept the report? I, I do have the parking numbers yet, if, if, I, just, oh, okay, if sure. I just might uh, add in there. Um, Again, uh, parking numbers, um, uh, let me see here. Yeah, they're significantly down uh, again. Um, we never stopped charging uh, parking rates um, simply because it was, uh, it was be too difficult to uh, not enforce um, and also get the word out on it. Um, but we've had significant uh, decreases, but we are seeing people come back. Uh, parking permits are, are growing. Um, we're changing over permits uh, this quarter, as a matter of fact, but um, revenue con uh, continues to lag. Um, again, we're going to be looking at uh, some significant changes or maybe increases to what we've known as the assessment over the last couple of years. Uh, assessment numbers for this year and next year could look very much similar to what they were in 2019. So we'll continue to monitor that, but again, revenue is, is significantly down. Any questions on the uh, quarter report? It says that the parking utility revenue was down slightly in the quarter over the same period in 2019. And the next sentence says overall revenue is up 21.4%. Yeah, 
Did you highlight this, Ann, or did I? I have a highlighted copy. Okay. <laughs> Um, I have to. I have to look at that. I, I just. I just realized that at this point. But our revenue was significantly up in the first quarter, um, and we did have. Uh, we did have revenue in the second quarter, um, but I think a lot. Of what happened was there was a lot of revenue that was turned back or that was refunded because of people turning in their parking permits. Um, so it is. It is possible our lag is going to be in this next quarter, um, as far as where parking numbers are going to be. So. I, I can follow up and just verify that that, that number is, I, I can tell you the first sentence is absolutely correct. I can tell you, um, I'll look up the second number or the second sentence in that first line just to make sure that that's um, accurate. Any other comments or any motions to accept the report? Motion, to accept the report. Okay. Motion and second, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. 4.3, 2020 Community Block Grant Agreement. Derek? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, uh, a matter of formality here. Um, this is the uh, latest uh, CDBG uh, application agreement. Um, I've closed that into your uh, packet for review today. Again, our amount that we are uh, that we applied for and were uh, granted, uh, forty-two thousand four hundred ninety-three dollars. The agreement is to accept those funds um, as part of our award for that grant. And I do have um, copies here today that would uh, be signed by the chair, and then also allowing me to uh, sign as a witness. Okay. Any further discussion or motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Cheer votes aye. That's approved. 4.4, Public Transit Agency Safety Report. All right. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is, um, this is going to take a little bit of time to go through. We're not going to cover the entire 56-page document. Um, but this, uh, the document in front of you is our Public Transit Agency Safety Plan. Um, as I put in the background analysis, this is required of all public transit systems, uh, surface transportation systems here um, going forward. Uh, the original uh, requirement was middle of this year, but due to COVID, uh, FTA has not been uh, requiring this in place until the beginning of next year. Um, so the document in front of you uh, has been put together by uh, staff of Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission and uh, staff within my office. Uh, we do have Jeff Agioio online from Bay Lake uh, Regional Planning Commission, uh, whose staff uh, works significantly and tirelessly on this document. I must uh, give them a shout out and say uh, what a great uh, attractive document it is. Uh, looks, looks really, really uh, put together. Um, and I wanted to say thank you guys uh, for that. Um, the, the document uh, really is a formality. Um, a lot of what uh, is contained in the document that is required of Shoreline Metro and the city of Sheboygan um, are things that we've been doing all along. Uh, Shoreline Metro has been, uh, at least over the last eight years since I've been here, uh, one of the safest transit uh, systems in the entire state of Wisconsin. Um, I don't want to jinx that today, but I want to elaborate on the fact that uh, a lot of the details that are contained in this document um, are things that we've already been doing. Uh, we've, we've embedded a safety culture in our organization. Uh, we've created a safety supervisor position, and I'll introduce Jack here in a second. Um, and we've also, uh, we've also contain, uh, created extensive policy and procedures uh, for our organization. Uh, FTA has now required us to formalize that and keep that into a living, breathing document that is uh, basically part of our organization in which all team members are required to participate and uh, be active in. So uh, the, like I said, the document in front of you today contains uh, all the mandatory uh, parts, uh, both uh, moving parts and uh, stationary parts that are required of this plan going forward. Um, at this time, I'd like to just in, uh, introduce Jeff and allow him to add any additional comments. I 
don't think we can hear you, Jeff. Jeff, we can't hear you if you are talking. We got nothing. Mic is on, yeah, it's just not. Nope. In the uh, in in the meantime, um, maybe I will uh, uh, just talk about a couple things here today. Um, this document uh, today uh, is is requiring approval by uh, you, the Transit Commission. Um, you are the oversight body uh, for Shore Lane Metro and the operations. Um, second page uh, really shows uh, a, a bunch of sign offs uh, today that um, and and shows you guys as the uh, board of directors. Um, so what you're really authorizing me to, uh, to do today is to be the accountable executive and sign on the document. Um, there's two key players in this document uh, going forward. Uh, myself, uh, which is known as the accountable executive. I believe I actually have a couple other terms in here as well. Um, and then also uh, there's a, a safety manager position or a uh, chief safety officer. And I just want to recognize uh, Jack Sawinski, who is our current uh, uh, safety education and training supervisor. Uh, Jack does all of our in-house training of our drivers. He is also the uh, oversight for our safety and our safety programs. So he's a natural fit uh, uh, for, this, uh, for this task. Uh, Jack uh, started as my original replacement when, uh, when I was promoted to director uh, by this fine body. And uh, he has really worked up the ranks. He's really have uh, really dedicated himself to training and safety within our organization. And he embraces uh, this opportunity to continue to lead our organization and the safety culture that we have. So um, I'm really I'm really proud to have Jack on my team and alongside me in uh, in uh, going forward with this plan. So Jeff, are you still uh, are you still muted? Not by choice. Yeah, I was never muted. Can people hear now or not? Yep. Really? Hey, no, we got you. Yep. Jeff, why don't you add some comments I about... Our, I had to bring some technical support in. I'm a product of the 80s, so uh, <laughs> um, I had to bring some technical support in to um, um, help out. Um, yeah, we worked pretty diligently with Jack and with Derek on, uh, on this plan. I think we had several teleconference meetings while I was... Um, we've been working from home... Um, we're back in the office here for about a month, month or two now, but um, during the throes of the working from home over the summer, um, had several teleconference meetings with Jack and with uh, Derek to um, uh, put the plan together. Uh, you know, the main body came together fairly quickly, uh, appendices A through C, and the last two appendices G and H uh, came together fairly quickly. I think the most challenging part was um, D, E, and F, um, terms of um, getting those together, but um, in terms of kind of the log for uh, re recording safety incidents and things like that. But I, I think it came together quite nicely. Um, Chris Garcia, who works with us, um, who was um, kind of my understudy transportation planner, put, to get, put this together in InDesign. Um, so I give him a lot of credit for putting that together. Um, um, I think you've kind of you've read the document, so I don't know if there are any questions or anything like that. Um. Thanks, Jeff. I'll, I'll add additionally that I did provide uh, uh, printed copies uh, for each of you today. Um, just want to make a uh, note of that in the minutes that it was distributed physically for you guys. This isn't a very important document, and uh, our triennial review, which was originally scheduled for August of this year, has been pushed out to the first quarter of next year. And they've already indicated that they're going to take up the public transit agency safety plan. So I just want to make sure that we're covering, uh, crossing our T's and dotting our I's on this as well. So um, if you have already printed, great. If you haven't, uh, you got a copy, and please uh, keep in your records uh, going forward. So um, as uh, 
I'll just wrap up. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Otherwise, um, today the, the request is uh, the staff recommends the approval of the Public Transportation Agency Safety Plan for Shoreline Metro place on file. I will additionally add that this document then will get forwarded to FTA uh, for their uh, review and concurrence. Uh, that review shouldn't take very long, but we should get that back. And once they have a concurrence on it, uh, it will be on record and ready to go. Um, and we can roll out the, the next steps in it so we're in, uh, ready for January 1 uh, implementation. All right. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. 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 There's a motion. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. 4.5, 2020 transit um, asset management plan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm going to defer to Jeff. Uh, I'll let him do the oversight uh, or overview, excuse me, on the TAM plan and uh, give you an update uh, for the 2020 version of the plan. Jeff? Okay, thanks. Is there a way to share the screen at all or do people have copies? Yeah. yeah, Scott can share the screen. So just give one second here and he's going to give you uh, permission to do that. Okay. Like he already did. Okay. Let me move things around here. So we have our draft transit asset management plan. I think this is probably the third or fourth one of these that we've done. Um, calendar year 2020. Uh, Chris Garcia, who works with me, put this together. Um, we have um, see our title page, table of contents, our transit asset management plan policy is stated. An agency overview where we talk about the fixed route buses, paratransit vehicles, sport vehicles, uh, pieces of equipment, and then the two facilities, which are the transit garage slash office and the transfer station. We have an introduction. The various uh, transit asset management plan elements are, are discussed here. Various definitions. Data good repairs, um, standards policy. We have our um, a table that shows uh, Shoreline Metro's asset performance in 2020 in terms of the goal and the actual performance. And then useful life benchmark. Uh, what we do here, uh, we look at our various assets for vehicles, for example, turning to page seven, we have table two where we break down the revenue vehicles and then the non-revenue vehicles. We have heavy duty and medium duty buses that are listed in the uh, revenue vehicles and light duty or sport vehicles for non-revenue. So we've set the target for uh, revenue vehicles to be uh, about 35% of revenue vehicles would be allowed to pass beyond useful life. Uh, non-revenue vehicles or uh, sport vehicles would be 0%. Um, I think that this percentage is going to improve over time. If you've um, looked at some of the recent awards that have been coming out, you have the Congestion Mitigation Air Quality Program that uh, awarded five buses this year. You've seen the Volkswagen um, Award that came out within the last couple weeks. This percentage is probably going to go down as we gradually uh, put these plans together over the next few years. So. Uh, I would expect to see that. Equipment wise, some of our equipment in table three is quite old. Um, we have a bus wash, a forklift, a hoist, and a scrubber. It's still uh, physically, according to everything we hear, is still performing well, but age wise, um, it's quite a ways beyond its useful life. And we acknowledge that in the target for equipment. Facility wise, we, uh, as I stated, we have two facilities the administration maintenance and storage facility, otherwise known as the bus garage, dates back to 1975. Uh, useful life for facilities is typically 40 years. We're a bit behind, uh, beyond that now. Uh, it's also had some issues such as um, 
um, a roof needing replacement, things like that, that are, are being addressed. The scale from one to five, it's considered two or adequate. But, um, and then the transfer station that was dedicated in 1992. So it's still below the 40 years uh, on a scale from one to five, it's considered a four or in good condition. Um, so we're allowing 50% of facilities to pass beyond useful life. Do bear in mind that um, some capital improvements like a roof replacement that's underway right now for the administration maintenance and storage facility is um, uh, are going to hopefully improve the condition of uh, that particular facility. And there may be other items that are programmed that'll improve things as well. And we discussed decision support tools and management approach um, in a table here, investment prioritization, plan review. These targets get reported in the National Transit Database. It gets reported to the Federal Transit Administration. And we have our conclusion. And uh, the contacts are Derek and myself. The Sheboygan Metropolitan Planning Organization, the Technical and Policy Advisory Committees recommended this for approval on September 3rd. Uh, the MPO or Metropolitan Planning Organization approval occurred on September 11th. So this is the last appro approval before this gets sent off to Federal Transit Administration. So that's what I have in terms of the TAM plan. Like I said, this is probably about the third or fourth one we've done. Um, and I would expect particularly for the, for the vehicles to see uh, considerable improvement uh, as um, buses get, replacement buses get programmed over time. Awesome, thanks Jeff. Derek, do you have anything to add on that one? I do not, Jeff did a great job summarizing that. Awesome. Is there a motion to accept the plan? Motion and then second, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, 4.6, yeah, thanks Jeff. Revised 2021 thanks, Jeff. parking utility budget. Derek? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to go back to number uh, 4.2 and just clarify the 21.4%. Uh, revenue is actually down 18.3% from 2019. I did not uh, change that number from the first uh, quarter report, so thank you for catching that. Okay, uh, 4.6, um, I'm bringing, uh, bringing back the 2021 uh, proposed parking utility budget. Uh, I had an opportunity to meet with City Administrator Wolf and his staff last week on preparations of the 2021 budget. Um, what we decided uh, was to go uh, a little bit more conservative um, on the revenues that were forecasted for 2021, um, and then also uh, try to more accurately depict the, or, or forecast the uh, assessments uh, for that. So what you are going to see in the, uh, attached budget are the highlighted sections, which are the adjustments that were made. Now you're gonna see some for 2020 that were in there. Um, those are the forecast models uh, for this year, but then also there were changes uh, made to the 2021 uh, requested revenues. Um, and then you're gonna see also uh, a significant jump in some areas for the parking assessment uh, districts. Of note, um, and, and like you just to compare where 20, uh, 2021's uh, assessments are forecasted and compare that with the actuals from 2019. Um, so you can see in pad one, uh, it's going to be in the $80,000 uh, $80, range uh, for that assessment. Um, as you continue to move forward into uh, the other assessment areas, um, Riverfront is uh, substantially lower than 2019. Uh, you look at Riverfront, or sorry, um, Pad 4, which is uh, didn't change, and then also South Pier, which did not change. Um, and those, uh, those numbers are uh, going to be in line. Uh, those didn't change because we don't have uh, collected revenue in those districts. Only Pad 1 and the parking admin have uh, collected fees such as uh, meters and or parking permits. Um, the last note that I wanna make is that parking admin um, is going to be relying on uh, nearly $42,000 uh, from its fund equity. 
uh, to balance the parking admin part of the budget. The original proposal was about $10,000. Um, so you can see uh, the COVID, uh, COVID pandemic has uh, uh, hit uh, the pad admin area in the tune of about 30 uh, extra thousand or 30,000 extra dollars to make that um, area uh, balance out. So I have presented this. Uh, I've worked with, uh, again, City Administrator Wolf and his staff, and they are in agreement with this uh, revised budget. So I ask uh, uh, staff is today recommending uh, the acceptance of the revised parking budget and um, allowing that to be uh, used by City Administrator Wolf and his executive budget. All right. Any questions for Derek regarding the budget? Sure. Um, for those listening, uh, Chad Palaszczuk had uh, asked if I would touch base on the uh, upcoming parking study that we uh, are going to be doing uh, that's going to be primarily focused on the assessments, the assessment districts, and how uh, parking utility uh, expenses get paid. Um, so Chad's correct. We, we did hire a consultant. It's w, WGI. Uh, they are actually fo the former Walker uh, group, um, and John, who we worked with in the past, is no longer with the group. So uh, we have a new consultant, and she seems very knowledgeable. Um, but we, uh, we decided to go this route and fund an additional parking study to analyze the parking districts and how uh, the parking districts are basically funded, uh, both from a revenue standpoint and an assessment standpoint. Um, we've, we've acknowledged over the last couple of years that the uh, parking uh, fund and, and the way that the assessments are administered um, may not be uh, in the 21st century, and we might need to look at uh, better ways to uh, fund the, the parking in Sheboygan. Um, I, I would be the first to tell you that the rates and the, f and the fees associated with parking have not increased with inflation over the years. Um, it wasn't uh, about two years ago we raised the meters from 30 cents to 50 cents. Um, so if, if, if that puts any perspective on this, um, we definitely need to research on how we can uh, maybe run a more sustainable, uh, cost-effective uh, parking utility with perhaps um, not as much reliance on the assessments or um, expanding assessment boundaries and looking at ways that revenues can uh, can work more for businesses um, and things like that. So um, it is our goal to work together uh, with the consultant, provide information, uh, do some comparables, and bring back a parking study that we can present to you guys um, that mostly will be used as an internal document, but something that you guys can uh, review and allow us to further research ways that we can be more effective in uh, administering parking services. Okay, thanks, Derek. Any it, other discussion? Is there a motion to approve the budget? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Um, 4.7 Director's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I won't uh, go through uh, most all of this. I wanted to provide you guys with a pretty good uh, insight as to what we've been doing uh, since the last opportunity to update you back in June. Um, the the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, again, I've talked about the revenue and the ridership part of it. Um, but what I really, uh, really want to say is it's given us a great opportunity to review a lot of what we've been doing, policies, procedures, uh, how we administer fares, how we collect revenues, things like that, um, from Jack and Ann and my, uh, that are here today with us to everybody else in my organization, including my bus drivers who've been very, very flexible. Um, we've really rolled out some, some pretty uh, incredible things um, to say that we're going tokenless on our paratransit services. Um, and then after today to say that we've lowered our uh, paratransit uh, agent, uh, ADA fare 
um, and some of the other things. I mean, these are truly incredible things that um, not every transit system is taking in, uh, is doing right now. Um, so, to, and, and also to roll out same day services and things in our paratransit, we've been doing a lot of good things um, that we've been merely talking about for years and finally put into action. So um, I think I speak on behalf of my staff uh, and, and I can say that we are truly excited on the opportunity the pandemic has given us. Um, we're not as thrilled as, as far as what the pandemic has done, um, but this is a great opportunity for us to, uh, you know, kind of change course, do things a little differently, and uh, still be as productive, if not more productive in the process. A um, few other items just to touch base on today. Um, again, I put some ridership stuff in here for you guys um, to, to show what we're doing and, and how we're now tracking it differently um, using some new technology that we've, we've had. I've touched base on the parking assessments forecast for 2020. Uh, Jeff uh, stole my thunder on the Volkswagen, but again, I'm, I'm really excited about this opportunity. Um, as I've stated in my email that we've, uh, we were awarded more buses than we actually have local funding for. Um, I've provided some additional information to uh, City Administrator Wolf and our Finance Director, Marty Halverson. Um, we'll continue to have conversations on whether or not it's appropriate to take advantage of more of those vehicles. Um, but we have an awesome opportunity that by 2022, early 2023, we could have 100% of our fixed route fleet uh, within useful life, which is an incredible feat. Uh, we have a roof project underway right now. Jeff uh, mentioned that a little bit before. Uh, we have two projects. So the first project uh, is the roof itself. The second project is now to uh, replace the decking, which was uh, approved last night at the city council meeting. Um, to say that uh, we're declaring an emergency on it is an understatement. Um, we actually have the roofers wearing harnesses on top of our roof. That's how dangerous it is. So uh, we, we definitely appreciate the opportunities and the support locally and federally uh, to make this project happen. But uh, the project two, uh, we're able to use CARES Act funding for. Um, so this will really bring our facility uh, up to uh, way, way, way past par, uh, if you will, on this. So we're excited for that project. And then lastly, just want to uh, say thank you on behalf of everyone at Shoreline Metro. Um, you know, we, we want to thank you guys for, for sticking with us, supporting us, um, sometimes virtually, sometimes via email um, over the last several months. Also, a uh, big shout out to our former chair and current city administrator, Todd Wolf, for his ongoing support and direction. We never had an opportunity to properly uh, recognize uh, Mr. Wolf before he uh, abruptly departed for a better opportunity, apparently. Um, but we, uh, we really appreciate uh, your support, uh, Mr. Wolf, over the last uh, five years or so on the Transit Commission um, and leading our organization uh, in a better direction. So really want to appreciate uh, the work that you've done. So thank you, sir. <clears throat> um, and then lastly, before we end today, uh, city staff has also been tremendously supportive of the department. And again, I'd like to, for the record, thank uh, my staff, everybody on the Transit Commission, everybody in the city of Sheboygan that has um, uh, helped us out um, during the pandemic. And uh, a shout out to our customers who uh, I'd like to think are the best in the industry. So again, thank you to everybody for your ongoing support and uh, support of myself and uh, entrusting me to run Shoreline Metro. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Derek. Is there a motion to accept the director's report? Motion to accept. Is there a second? Second. There's been a motion second. Any further discussion or comments or questions for Derek? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the report, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. Next meeting, November 17th, seeing that we've exhausted the agenda, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 5. 44. Thank you, everybody.